The common ion effect is a shift in equilibrium due to the addition of an ion that is already present in the system. Let's consider this equilibrium system for example, and let's imagine what would happen if we added some additional cyanide ion. First of all, the cyanide ion is considered a common ion because cyanide is already present in this equilibrium system. As you know, if we add additional cyanide, this is going to cause the position of equilibrium to shift to the left as the system tries to use up the additional cyanide that we've added. As the position of equilibrium shifts to the left, this will also cause the concentration of H3O plus to decrease. As the concentration of H3O plus decreases, the system will become less acidic or more basic, which causes the pH to go up. We are able to pretty easily calculate the pH of this particular system if we know how much extra cyanide has been added. The equation that we will use to do this type of calculation is called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and it says that the pH of a system in equilibrium with a common ion present is equal to the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base divided by the concentration of the acid. I'm going to go through this equation, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and make sure that you understand all of the terms in this equation. First of all, the pKa is something that I talked about in a previous video, and it is calculated by taking the negative log of the Ka. Just like pH is the negative log of H3O+, and pOH is the negative log of OH, pKa is the negative log of the Ka. And you might wonder, why would we use pKa? Why would we not just use Ka? Some areas of science prefer to use pKa. Some areas prefer to use Ka. You can typically find pKa values tabulated, just like you can find Ka values tabulated. Second of all, let's take a look at what's going on over here, the concentration of the base and the concentration of the acid. So this is specifically referring to the conjugate acid-base pair in our equilibrium, equilibrium system. The conjugate, I don't think I spelled that right. Conjugate acid base pair. And so, in order to successfully use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, you are going to need to be able to identify what is the base, and you're also going to need to be able to identify what is the acid. And that can be a little bit tricky, but I've got some tips for you. So, when we're looking for the base and the acid, we are going to be specifically looking at the balanced equation. The base and the acid are going to be found in this balanced equation. Now, the first thing that I want to tell you the base and the acid are never going to be water or H3O plus, or OH minus. In your balanced equation, you're gonna have two of these three things. You'll always have water, and water is never ever going to be our base or the acid. And then you're also going to have either H3O plus or OH minus. In this system, we have H3O plus. So again, you're always gonna have two of these three things, cross them out immediately because they are not going to be your base or your acid. So that gets you narrowed down to two things. And so you've got like a 50-50 chance of getting it right. You've got two things narrowed down. Typically, only one of the two, so I'll cross these off again, typically only one of the two remaining compounds is going to be charged. Typically, one will be charged and one will be neutral. Occasionally, they might both be charged, but you're never going to be in a situation where they're both neutral. So at least one of them will be charged, and we're going to use the charges to help us figure out which is which. The base is going to be negatively charged if you have a negatively charged species, um, or the base could also be neutral. But what I can say for certain is that if anything in there is negatively charged, it's going to be your base for sure. The acid is going to be positively charged, um, or it might be neutral. But the acid could never be negatively charged, and the base could never be positively charged. So this, again, is what we're going to use to help us find the acid in the base. So first of all, let's go through the steps again. Number one, your acid and your base could never be water or H3O plus or OH minus. So you're going to find your balanced equation and you're going to cross those guys off because they cannot be your acid or your base. Then you're going to look at what you have left. What we have left is HCN and CN minus. We have something that's negatively charged, so we know for sure that that is our base. We know for sure that it's our base. And then that means the other substance has to be the acid.